Good morning, everyone. This is Gail Dudley with your news in motion. How are you today? How many of you are up? Many of us did not go to sleep until after 1.30 this morning. So let me know that you're out here. Good morning. Good morning, Marion. Good morning, Pastor Alex. Good morning. Good morning. So did y'all go to sleep last night or have y'all been up all night? Good morning, Brenda Randleman. Good morning, Kim Keels. Good morning, Kelly Lee. Good morning. Good morning. So who stayed up? Who stayed up till wee hours in the morning? Good morning, Carolyn. Good morning, Tamara. Good morning, Leah. Good morning. What's up, Adrian? What's up to my brother, Louis Pryor? Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Elizabeth. Y'all are coming in. So does that mean y'all didn't sleep last night? Stephanie, welcome back. Good morning, Philip. Good morning. Good morning, Latrice Jones. Good morning. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, y'all. Good morning, Kim Hill. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So what do y'all think? What do y'all think? I was the reason I came on a little late. Good morning, Felicia. Good morning, Liz. The reason I came on a little late was because I was waiting to see if there was a um, was a, an official on Asif. Asif is in the lead, but good morning. Good, yes, that's right, John Gore. That's, that's right. That's right. Victory, y'all. Victory, victory, victory. Um, there's, there's just, there needs to be a little bit more percentage to really call Asif. So I was waiting to jump on, but if any of you have seen the latest, because I had to turn off all of my... Um, all of my computer, the television, everything, so that I can come on here. Good morning, Keisha. Good morning, Kenya. Um, so if anyone's heard a, an official call on Asif, please post it, and we'll just celebrate all together. But there has to be a wider margin for them to call it. I know some news organizations has have called it for Asif, but we always, it's known that you always look at the Associated Press, NPR, in NBC News. Why those three? I have no idea. Good morning, Brenda Troy. Why those three? I have no idea. But we're waiting for those those three networks to call it. Again, in any um, race like that, the people to call it are the Associated Press is normally first, and then is followed by NPR, and is followed then followed by NBC News. So Asif, at this point, when I came on here, had not been called yet. There are some people who are calling it for him, but he's not yet within the margin. Um, you have to be within the margin so it's not contested and they, there's not an automatic recount. So uh, we're holding out hope, y'all. We're holding out hope, and I am so excited. So with that said, I want to go this direction with the news this morning. And, and I want to talk about how um, we have to be attentive, we have to hear, um, we have to really listen to what's being said. And then from that listening, we have to be obedient behind it. There has to be obedience. You know the scripture, obedience is better than sacrifice. So we have to be obedient behind it. And lately, and I'll, and I'll just be transparent, last evening, I never worried about this race. I don't know why, I just never worried about it. And last evening, well, I guess it was more like one o'clock this morning, I was lying in bed watching the returns. And I said, okay, I'm going to sign off. And I was like, God, it's in your hands. And at that point, I just had an unusual peace. And what came to me, the first will be last and the last will be first. Again, the first will be last and the last will be first. And with that being said, I just knew in my spirit that Warnock and Asif would rise above. If we even look at the landscape of what was happening in Georgia, if we look at the landscape, y'all, there were there have been more than 79,000 new voters in Georgia. And that's just from November the 3rd election until yesterday's election. 79,000. My daughter, for example, was talking about Every day, every day, someone was knocking on her door. And I asked her, I said, did that ever bother you? She said, mom, their ground game was so tight. 
She said it was so tight. Even the knock on the door was not offensive, was not bothersome, wasn't anything. She said they have a ground game that even when they knock on your door, she said it was so welcoming. It was so inviting. She said, I want to like just keep voting over and over and over again. And she said, I'm like sold out for voting and doing what I need to do moving forward when it comes to the election. So they have a ground game, y'all. And y'all know yesterday I talked about empowerment. I talked about social engagement. I talked about political knowledge. We talked about generating income and wealth. Talked about education. And I also talked about uh, volunteerism and philanthropy. They had all of that in Georgia. And kudos, kudos, kudos to Stacey Abrams. She needs a medal of honor. She needs the she needs the highest medal there is. So hopefully Joe Biden will give her that and will also give her a position. But I also thought about that, y'all. And I want to talk about this. I'm going in, I'm into the news already, so just follow me. The other thing I said, you know, sometimes we want the highest positions for people. But maybe God's purpose is, and I don't know this, I don't know this. I'm just talking to you as we're, we're in the new year and we're thinking about this. Maybe her purpose is what she's doing. Maybe that's where God has ordained her for such a time as this. Maybe later he'll move her out. I don't know. I, I, I don't know that. And I want to speak to you today as we're looking at the news. Don't be so quick to move. Don't be so quick to move, y'all. Don't be so quick to move. Because maybe we have our eyesight on something else and God is saying, no, no, you, I, you, you're right where I want you and you're doing well right there. You're doing well. You're doing well right there. So congratulations to Senator-elect Warnock. Um, um, congratulations to you. Um, and then we're just holding out hope for Asif is looking very good, is looking very good. And if anyone gets the returns as we're on here this morning, just please post that. But we're looking very good. So obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Are you hearing God speak to you today? And are you being obedient to that word that he is speaking? Um, because even today we have in Congress, today is January the 6th. Good morning, Yvonne. We have in Congress where the Electoral College uh, votes will be certified. And we also know we have about 13 people who wants to cut up and act a little off today. But, you know, we're praying. We're praying. We also had 170 CEOs of major companies write a letter telling the Republicans, don't do that. Don't try to block what's already been been done because it will it will damage democracy here in the United States. It will damage it. Then we also have, and, and I'm building on this, so y'all just follow me. We also have the Kenosha police officer will not face any charges. So my question to you today is what are we going to do? Because that's not okay. That's not okay. What are we going to do? Here in Columbus, Ohio, we uh, the, um, the, the funeral of An Mr. Andre Hill was yesterday. Um, and Al Sharpton came and did the eulogy. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? This is where strategy is important. This is where strategy is important. And we have a responsibility to strategize to make a difference. We have a responsibility to strategize to make a difference. Yesterday, we talked about waste. We talked about the food and how many millions of ton, tons of food is in the landfill. Then we talked about the community produce. I see Brenda Choi's on here. She's going to get excited about this. The, the community produce and how produce can be delivered to your home. That's talking about building wealth. That's also helping the farmers. Well, then Carrie Cooper from Oregon, when she watched the, the, the video afterwards, you know, she's three hours behind us in Oregon. She then tagged on my post about the black farmers. See, y'all, it's bigger than what sometimes we think about. And, and how can we connect and sow into and give to the black farmers of America? What does that look like for all of us today? Y'all, this is what's important. You know, yeah, we, we voted. I know some of you are tired of, of hearing about politics, but as I shared yesterday, everything's political, so it never really stops. We have to think about that. 
So I told you on Monday we were going to, I was going to pause in different sections and have you fill the screen because of our media alert. We, we are now in a place, thanks to all of you and our family, we're now in a place that we can respond back to news wires in, in, in the 117th Congress. So I want to pause for a moment and ask this question. I want you to fill it. Again, we won't put your names on there. We will just put... Yes, the black farmers. That's right. Good morning, Kenny. Um, we will just put on here when we send back the news wires, some things that the News and Motion family is considering. So here's my question. With um with the officers not being charged, um, the Kenosha police, you know, this is the second time, what in a span of five days, seven days, where the where the police were not charged. Um, so so let's just think about. What is it that we are calling our elected officials to do for such a time as this? What type of legislation are we looking for? See y'all, this is news in motion. This is, this is news with relevant commentary that's mixed also with inspiration and, and, and a call to action. So this is who we are. This is what we do. So, so I give news, but we're also going to work through this. So on Wednesday, consider that Wednesday work day. So, so on Wednesday, and today is Wednesday, what would you like to see? So just fill the news feed with what would you like to see? What what are we calling? Okay, I see transparency. Thank you, Keisha. What are we calling our elected officials to do? What? Because we're exhausted and we cannot continue to be on this emotional roller coaster. A accountability, yes. We cannot continue to be on this emotional, uh, emotional roller coaster just for the heck of it. We go out and protest one day. Good morning, Alethea girl. It's early in your neck of the woods. What are you, 5.30 this morning, are you? Um... Fairness and justice. Because what happens is, I was talking with a friend of mine the other day, and we were talking about anxiety. And anxiety, she, she shared with me, are like three different areas. One being worry, and, and another one being fear, and the other one being tension. And I can't take credit for that. I got to give credit to my girlfriend. I won't name her because I don't know if I'm supposed to be sharing it or not. But anyway, listen, those three things create anxiety. So if we are afraid to do anything, if there is tension that's constantly building up, and if we are worrying, that would that could possibly bring on anxiety. I'm not a, 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 a physician, so I don't know, but let's check with, I don't know if Shantae's on here or not, but let's check with her. But, but y'all, we have to say, okay, how else do we respond going forward? Because enough is enough. Why are these people, why are these officers getting off? Why are they continuing to even uh, be terminated from one job, but then go to another city, state, or county and, and put on the badge again and then shoot again? We have prison reform. That's a good one, too. Thank y'all. Thank y'all for filling the news feed because we need to do something and collectively we can make a difference, y'all. Collectively, we can make a difference. So keep filling that in. Keep filling that in. Um... Um, I didn't see that, but I'll, I'll read that again, Pastor Alex. Good morning, Cassandra. Um, thorough investigation, yes. And then a nonpartisan thorough investi investigation. Nonpartisan. Let's talk for a moment about stand your ground. Ohio went into stand your ground. I was really surprised that Governor DeWine signed that. We're already in a situation, and by the way, the mayor of Columbus, Ohio, and 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 uh, uh, Mayor Ginther, um, he was he was hot. He was upset that the governor signed that. So even with that, it was like, well, now you're going to give him a reason. We, you know, she looked intimidating to me. I thought she, you know, she was threatening my space, so I killed her. He was threatening my space. He didn't look like, he had a hoodie on, so I shot. I didn't mean to kill him, but I shot. I stood my ground. That's going to be the answer to so much. And I believe there's now 32 or 33 states that has that law in place. Y'all, this is the, the time is now to start dealing with so much. Actually, the time has passed, but here we are today. It's time for us to really say something and not be afraid about saying anything, not being afraid about this, and being accountable one to another um, in our in our individual communities, y'all, and then our collective communities. We can no we can no longer separate this. We can no longer ignore it, y'all. This is real. This is real. 
So forming a union, more than 200 employees at Google's apparent company signed their union cards, officially making the Alphabet Workers Union a thing. So that happened. March Madness, the entire 2021 NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament it will be held in Indianapolis, uh, eliminating the uh, typical regional sites due to COVID-19. That's happening. The, women, uh, turn, the women's tournament will be entirely in San Antonio. That's happening. They're not sure if you're going to be able to attend the games or not. Who wants to? Y'all, this next, this next variant, this, this strain that's now coming out, they now have identified three different strains, three different variants out of Africa. They're headed this way. It's already in the UK. Y'all, we're not out the woods yet. Vaccine or not, we're not out the woods yet. And just think, we didn't even hit, I think we're now right about 5 million who have been vaccinated. They're talking about we were supposed to have 20 million at the end of last year. That didn't happen, y'all. So this is real. This is still going on. Y'all, the 2020 Grammys, uh, Grammy Awards has been, post has been postponed till March the 14th due to COVID-19. Y'all, here's the coronavirus numbers. 21 million. 579,641 confirmed cases. 21,579,641. Deaths. 365,664 deaths. Recovered 12,862,216. So let's celebrate the recovery. Again, that's 12,862,216. Someone asked me the other day, so what's the difference between that 21,000 and that 12,000? And I said, well, first of all, you got to pull the deaths out of there. And second of all, that, that's, I, and I don't know where the other numbers are, but more than likely, those are the people in there fighting for their lives, fighting for their lives. You know, um, and yeah, I have a personal story. Y'all know I have a personal story. And, and, and um, to hear my daughter share the story with her grandparents from FaceTime, nothing else, on FaceTime of just how much pain she was in, I thank God over and over and over again that she came through that. People, you know, people, they saying it's hard to, to articulate their pain and what their body goes through and their mental health. Y'all, mental health is huge when it comes to COVID-19. I think the first person who was transparent about mental health was Chris Como with CNN News. When he talked about he was waking up and he was confused, he didn't know what was going on, he was feeling like he was in a dungeon, how his mind was being attacked. Y'all, this is what's happening. This is what's happening. And a $2,000 stimulus check, a $600 stimulus check is not working, it's not helping any of those things. So y'all, collectively as a community, we have to go deeper than this. It is so, it is so deep. So again, y'all have heard me say this several times. Again, we have to identify our purpose beyond the career we have, beyond the job we have, beyond the businesses that we have. We need to understand our purpose when it comes to community. What's your individual role? And then we need to connect all those roles together so collectively we can make a difference. No one can do it by themselves. No one. No one can do it by themselves. No one. So what is it that you bring to the table? I know there's several of you who have been talking about, okay, now that there's been a march, what? Now is the time to identify that what and move out on it. And, and I know there's a person on here who knows that I won't name her, but, but she knows who I'm talking to. Yeah, so we, we marched, we protest, now what? So I'm speaking to that person again, I won't name her. I'm speaking to that person to say, it's time for you to go ahead and move on out with that. Because God gave you that assignment, he put that in your, in your spirit for a reason. Now is the time to move out with that. It's time to move out with that. Others of you may have had the same questions in your cities and your states. Okay, we protested, we've done, you know, we, we sang kumbaya, now what? Because now these, are, these police officers, they're not even being charged. So what are we going to do? What's our next step? What's our next step? And for those of you who are on here today, but may have missed yesterday, go back through yesterday's and look at the five points I gave. Uh, I gave social engagement, I gave, um, 
uh, generating income, political uh, awareness or knowledge, I believe I had it, um, education, and then uh, philanthropy and volunteerism. And then I broke down each one of those. That's what we're going to have to implement as we continue to move out. All right, y'all, England has imposed another national lockdown, at, and they're doing this until at least mid-February. Um, the pharmacist who was arrested on the charges that he intentionally sabotaged more than 500 vaccines is known as, a, as an admitted conspiracy theorist. Y'all travel. You know, I got to give y'all some fun news today. Travel. Travel. Now, I don't know who's going on a cruise because there are still ships out there at sea. Did y'all know that? I, I, and I'll get to that part in a moment because that's the series. But I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna have some fun first, and then I'm gonna go serious on you, y'all. There's a ship. There's a, it's a Carnival Cruise Line. Of course, it was gonna be Carnival, right? Carnival Cruise Line. The the Carnival the the cruise line uh, called Carnival Pride. So Carnival Cruise Ship, starting February the 13th, 2022. So they're waiting. They are doing. Once a quarter, it's called Bare Necessities. It's a company offering nudist cruise events. <laughs> what? Who's going on a cruise ship with everybody's new? I don't care if it is 2022. We have a virus that's not going to just disappear unless God says it's going to disappear. I'm not going on a cruise with you and you're not wearing no clothes. Really? I'm not doing that. So y'all, that's happening. That's happening. It's called it's called the the big nude boat event. The big nude uh, boat event. Now y'all sign up with that if y'all want to, but I don't think so. I don't think so. Now on the serious side of cruises, there are still ships out at sea, and this is out of Bloomberg Business Week. Um, Austin Carr is the reporter. With the global pandemic bringing the cruise ind industry to a screeching halt, thousands of cruise members have been isolated at sea still today. Still today. They are stuck in tiny cabins for months on end, only able to come out at certain times due to the pandemic. But here's what's happening, y'all. Here's what's happening. When people are realizing they're not seeing their cruise mates, they go knocking on their doors, the doors they're not answering. They go inside their cabins and they have found that cruise members have been committing suicide in their cabins. So we need to pray for that. We need to, we need to pray for that. We need to pray for their mental capacity. We need to pray for that. We need to pray for that, y'all. They are opening up the cabin doors and finding that their cabin mates or cabin employees have committed suicide, have committed suicide. So y'all can read that in Bloomberg Business Week. All right, y'all, fast food, new food. Uh, McDonald's is launching a new chicken sandwich and Chipotle has added cauli cauliflower rice for a limited time, cauliflower rice. So everybody go to Chipotle and get your, calif your uh, cauliflower rice for a limited time. All right, for the win. Now, Stacey Abrams, y'all heard me in the beginning, she gets all kinds of kudos. But for the win today, for the win today, Nisi Ufop, and that's N-S-E, and then the last name is capital U-F-O-T. Now, she's a, she's a sister in Georgia. She is a chief executive of the New Georgia Project, uh, one of the leading statewide groups focused on voter registration and engagement. It was estimated that this past Saturday, her canvassers um, had knocked on more than a million doors and have issued over 3 million text messages during this Georgia runoff. So... Again, Stacey Abrams is the bomb. But let's also remember the other the other organization. See, this is what happens sometimes. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm not saying that. Sometimes we identify the 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 most profile person who's doing and again, Stacey Abrams is the bomb.com. I'm not taking anything away from her. Stacey Abrams is the bomb.com. But sometimes we focus on the, the high profile person or the high profile people. 
Let's not forget the other people. And I'm not even calling them little people. There are other people who are making that train run. A train cannot go down the track without a conductor, without the wheels, without the janitors, without the people taking the tickets, without the food servers, without, there's many, there's multiple people without the people in the towers. There are many people that make that train run. So yes, kudos to Stacey Abrams, but let's not forget about these other grassroots organizations. Now the new Georgia project, it's not, it's no small feat, but they're not really recognized. You hear about fair fight. So even in our own local communities, let's stop just looking at the head honcho because there's somebody else on the playing field who's also organizing and moving and educating and teaching and instructing and their vision is coming into play. So let's not forget about them. So she gets the win. Y'all need to Google her. Sister's bad. Sister is bad. Sister is bad. All right, y'all. Now the inspirational message. Um, and I want to just say God's going to get the glory out of this. Again, 1, 1.30 this morning, I'm looking at the returns coming. I'm like, this is the bomb. At one point, my sister, I'm going to just blast her on here. My sister, Kim, she sent a text message. You know, the, the siblings have a group text. She said, y'all, these numbers don't look good. I text back. Girl, DeKalb County and Fulton County and Cobb County has not come in yet. They black. And if we're gonna look at we're, we're gonna look at the ground game of what was happening, and those are hundreds of thousands of votes. It's coming. Just wait, just wait for. And I think I put on the text message, Pat. Uh, Pat and my brother Lewis is on here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did not respond back like wait for it. That's all I put on there. Like wait for it. It's about to come through. And then the numbers started changing. The numbers started changing. I mean, like a big hit happened, and that's when Warnock went to the top, and then. Um, Asif was neck and neck with Purdue. So God's going to get the glory out of this. There's so much that's happening all around us. God is going to get the glory out of this. Um, my brother said, yes, you did. I just put on there, wait for it. Um, and I used to live there, so I knew, wait for it, it's coming. But God's going to get the glory out of this. There has been so much emphasis on the evangelicals. And I'm not saying anything against the evangelicals, okay? They're Christians. I'm a Christian. But there are, are, are other people praying. And so I was lying in bed last night or early this morning. I was thinking, wow, we have different groups praying for different things. What makes these prayers answer, be answered? And what the Holy Spirit laid upon me was that whatever is in alignment with my word will be answered. It has to be a direct alignment. You can pray. You can pray for stuff that God never told you to pray for. You're not going to get that prayer. That prayer is not going to be answered. It's not. But if you pray according to God's word, it's going to get answered every time. It's going to get answered every single time. And what is God's word? You have to read the word to know it for yourself so you know how to pray accordingly. So I'm not going to sit there and say, oh, God, please put uh, Warnock in the office. No, God, what is your will? God, you see what's happening. You see the disparities. You see how people are becoming frustrated. You see. So God, let your will be done. Well, what's it? who did Jesus hang out with? Who did he always call out? What did he always unveil? That's his will. So I'm going to pray in accordance with that. Let me go back to where I started in the beginning of this broadcast today, of this episode today. And that is, we need to start listening to what the Holy Spirit is speaking, and we need to be obedient to those words. Let me not say need. It, it, is, it is encouraged that we become obedient to those words. It may not make sense to you at all what God is speaking. It may not make absolutely no sense to you what God is speaking. But as God is speaking, if you are obedient to that thing, you will begin to see things unfold. There's a lot of things lately that has made no sense to me. None, none. But I know what God has said. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna walk in this. And one door after another just keeps opening. It makes absolutely no sense. None. I'm gonna tell you something. Yesterday, I don't know if any of you all have PayPal or whatever else you have going on. PayPal 
messed up my account royally. I mean, messed it up. And it was like pulling things from different bank accounts, like from the business account, from, from my personal. I'm like, what is happening? So I called PayPal up and I said, okay, we got a problem here. Now, it makes no sense, none. I told the lady, I said, okay, that's fine. We make mistakes, but, but how are we going to fix this? What are we going to do? She responds back. And I'm like, well, what did you say? She says, well, this is what I'm going to do just for the hardship alone. I'm going to just deposit some money back in your PayPal account. What? No, just make it work. It's, you see where you've pulled it out three times. Just pull it out once and then put the other back. She did that, but she also deposited some money in the account. It made no sense. It made no sense. And so I'm like, God, what am I supposed to do with this money? And it wasn't a lot of money. Don't, don't think that. God was like, well, who needs some? Who, who needs to be fed? What, what, you know, you got favor, so now you got to favor somebody else. Y'all, that's how you do that. And the conversation, the woman on the phone was like, and this is what happened. This is for real what happened. She says, I have been yelled at because there was a glitch in the system. And she said that. She goes, there was a glitch in the system all over PayPal. So some of y'all, if y'all had this, y'all better find out. She says, so you've been the nicest person all day. So this is what I'm going to do for you. So y'all, niceness pays off. She goes, this is what I'm going to do for you. Since for your hardship, this is what I'm going to do for you. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And it didn't make any sense. I'm like, well, just balance it back out. You know, it's cool. Whatever. No, no, you've been nice to me. She said that like three or four times. You've been nice to me. Everyone else has cussed me out, called me all kinds of names. You've been nice to me. See, I was just going to email and I was led to pick up the phone to call. I was going to say, hey, I was going to, I took screenshots like, hey, can y'all make this right? And I, it was like, no, call, call and talk to somebody, call and talk to somebody. See, this is where we are in our journey. It's time for us to talk, but it's also time for us to listen. What is God speaking to you? And then from what he's speaking, make sure you're being obedient to the instructions that he's given you. All right, y'all. I'm Gail Dudley with your News in Motion. Today is Wednesday, January the 6th. Pray for Congress today, y'all. Pray, pray for Congress today, y'all. Start listening to what God is speaking and acting on it accordingly. I cannot tell you that enough. God is speaking. The question is, how will you respond? God is speaking but how will you respond? All right, tomorrow, y'all, we got a serious countdown tomorrow. We have a serious countdown tomorrow. Y'all want to get y'all's pen and paper for this countdown. And we just that crazy at News in Motion. The News in Motion family, we coming out with a bang. We coming out with a bang. Anybody need a hundred dollars? Is there anybody out there that needs a hundred dollars? News in Motion is coming with y'all tomorrow with a bang. You better be ready. No Googling tomorrow. We, we cut out Google for tomorrow. No Googling for tomorrow. And you will only have from the time that I am giving the instructions until I end it to put your answers. Any answers after that time will not be counted. Will not be counted. Anybody need a hundred dollars out there? All right, y'all. See y'all tomorrow right here. God willing, at 7.25 a.m. Let's let's pray for Asa. Let's pray for Asa that, Asa that he pulls it on through. All right, y'all. I love y'all. Peace out. Have a great day. I'm out of here.